Bismillahirrahmanirrahim اللهم إن سلك علم لدني ما شب السوفي الهني وهب يغني اللهم إن سلك علم لدني ما شب السوفي الهني وهب يغني اللهم إن سلك علم لدني ما شب السوفي الهني وهب يغني صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين آمين الحمد لله ااا وكتري إن شاء الله وفي إن شاء الله بتلف أحد the last few like, most of the battle right but i want to just go back and just uh reflect on the verses of the quran right that is that that have been revealed uh on the account of the battle of ohad right so when we so, so last week i told the story uh briefly right uh actually in fact you know it is it is most of the detail that is uh there for the battle of Uhud. There, there was actually a um duel at the beginning of the battle right but it was uh finished off by zaina zubair i bin awam who is the uh, nephew of Sayyidina Khadija, I've been right? So he, he there was one there was only one duel, right? That uh, one 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 of the uh, disbelievers came forth, right, challenging to a duel and Sayyidina Zubir came out and he finished him off very quickly. So I didn't really hear much about the duel. Right? It was a it was a very quick duel. Right. So uh, but what what it did was that it actually uh, weakened the Muslim the, the, it weakened the disbelievers, right? Uh, in that one of the strong men right, was finished off uh, easily by uh, one of the Muslims. All right. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right, There are many parts in the Quran Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals On the account of the battle of Uhud right? So the first verse that is uh, mentioned here Is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in Surah Anfal right, Verse 36 where he says A'udhu billahi minash shaytani rajim Inna alladhina kafaru yunfiquna amwalahum Liyasuddu an sabinillah فَسَيُنْفِقُونَهَا ثُمَّ تَكُونُ عَلَيْهِمْ حَسَرَةً ثُمَّ يُغْلَبُونَ Right, so here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that for surely the disbelievers, right, for surely they will spend a lot of wealth right, uh, in order to, uh, to, 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 to block the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah says, and yeah, they will, they will spend all the wealth they want. You know, they, will, they will spend their wealth right, you know, in, in a way of uh, destroying Islam or blocking the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that, that is from the time of Rasulullah till today. Right? They, are, they, will, they, will be, they are that way and they will always, they are, there are those who will always be that way. Uh, but they will just, you know, subhanAllah, they will, uh, they, they, will, they will spend so much money to make sure that, for example, on online, right, that, is, that, that the articles on Islam, on Rasulullah Islam, that the majority of the articles will be false or will be corrupted or will be, you know, so that's to, 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 yes, to do an sabinillah. That means they, they want to block the way to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah says, you know what, the kind of wealth that they, could, that they, that they, uh, they spend, uh, it will only serve as loss for them. Right? A loss meaning, you know, in two ways. First example, that this wealth will just, you know, go to waste. Right? And the second way of loss is that on a day of judgment, the kind of wealth that they spent right, to go against Islam, that wealth will surface as punishment in the hellfire. It will manifest as, as, as terrible punishments. And Allah says, and eventually, you know what, they will, they will be... Uh, they will be overcome eventually, right? Or they will be beaten eventually, right? So the disbelievers, there is no uh, success and no triumph for them, right? They will be, they will be defeated, 
Right, so here Allah begins, you know, um, speaking about this, right, because in the Battle of Uhud, the disbelievers actually gathered forces, you mentioned, eh, from around Arabia, right, from around Mecca, sorry, from around Mecca, they gathered forces right, to go and fight the, the, uh, the Muslims. So, so the Battle of Uhud was actually a, it was a planned battle, right? It was a planned battle. It was, uh, it was, uh, it was set, it was set, right, that they are going to meet on this particular day and they're going to fight. Right, so it was a battle, it was a battle. Right, so it was the first, basically it was the first compulsory battle right, in a way that all the Sahabas... So, uh, uh, there were battles from before that, right, but this is the first compulsory major battle right, that all the Sahabas had to come out for. Which is why you see a huge difference in the number. Right, uh, for Badr, it was 313. Right, and for Uhud, there was a thousand strong right, coming out uh, for the battle of Uhud. There's a huge difference in number, it's only a year apart. Right, so it didn't mean that you know, suddenly you know, uh, 700 people came into Islam. Right, there were Muslims uh, around, right, but but Badr was not a compulsory uh, battle. Or rather, they came out uh, to intercept a caravan. Right? So Uhud is 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 the one that was actually they they prepared for, they actually really prepared for, right? And and uh, and and Allah Subhanahu and other parts of the Quran says that you know and you came out in huge numbers and you were f- so proud of your numbers. Right? But your numbers is, they don't benefit you if you have no dis- if, if you have no obedience to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Battle of Uhud is a very strong lesson in obedience. Very strong, right? You don't talk about you don't talk about uh, any form of success if there is no obedience to God Subhanahu wa Taala. And in obedience to God, it is obedience to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Right, so it, it, is, it is impossible. It is impossible for someone to say that I will succeed in life and he does not pray. He does not fast. He does not give his zakat. He does not uh, uh, be good to others or be kind to others. It is impossible that he says he has success in this world and the next. Right, it's impossible. It is, it is impossible. Right, because success oh, in this battle, we see very clearly success can only come with obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and no other way. There is no other way whereby success can come. Impossible. It is impossible. In fact, there was a battle uh, later on during the time of Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. I said Umar was a Khalifa. And usually the Muslims, you know, they go out in small numbers and they will beat, you know, huge armies. A small number of them will beat huge armies. And we see in the Battle of uh, Badr, the number 313, right, it's actually a special number. Right? That, 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 that was the same number of people who actually went forth in the battle between Nabi Dawood and Jalut. And Nabi, Nabi Dawood is a story in the Quran, right? Between Nabi Dawood and David and Goliath, right? You can hear you know the story of David and Goliath, right? So basically, the story goes that uh, Paulut, right? Paulut is a king in the time of Nabi Dawood, right? So in in the past, right, the king used to be the king, and then the prophets are the prophets, right? They don't combine. Nabi Dawood was the first prophet whereby kingship and prophecy combined in one person, right? and Nabi Sulaiman uh, followed thereafter. Whereby kingship and prophethood combine in one person. But most prophets are prophets and then they have their kings. Right? They are kings that are separate from the uh, prophet. Right? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, of course, you know, he was a prophet right? and also the uh, religious uh, authority. Right? So basically the imam. Right? The imam and then he was, also, he, was, he was, so he's a prophet, the imam, and he's also the king in a way. Right? He's a leader. Of entire society and entire empire. Right? This is what we, we understand from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why <laughs> Yeah, Subhanallah. Right. So, uh, no, this I wonder that like, those people who have like very loud motorbikes, right? Like, why? <laughs> I don't really wonder why. You know? Uh, yeah, but I any mean, because I live right next to the to the uh, expressway. Like middle of the night, you know, very loud. You know, sometimes you wonder why. Must you? Sometimes it has uh, the sound is patented. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. It's, so it's ridiculous. Yeah, but you know, Allah you know, because it does, it does go into, you know, sin. It is, I mean, if they are Muslims, then it's a sin because you're 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 bothering everybody around if you're going that way in the middle of the night, you know. So you know, people have children and babies, you know, like sometimes it's just blaring, you know. So, you know, Allah alam, Allah knows best. Alright, so alhamdulillah. Uh, so Masayna Muhammad. Right, so so the, the 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 story of David and Goliath is that is that Paulut, right? Paulut is the king. So basically the story starts off in Surah Baqarah. Right? Surah Baqarah, you come towards the end of the second juice, 
right uh, and, uh surah baqarah uh, allah tells the story of uh, talut so first allah begins with the bani israel approaching their prophet he had a prophet at that time his name was not mentioned right, in in the surah itself but in the tafsir you know i have to check whether his name was mentioned right so basically he they come to their prophet and say that you know ask allah to appoint for us a king so that you might fight in his way right so apparently in the land there have been people who had come right who had uh, who were who were transgressors and oppressors in the land so they want to fight right so they, to before to before they can fight they have to actually have a leader to lead them into fighting right and then the, the prophet says will you turn will you turn your backs if fighting is commanded onto you right will you will you run away and he said no 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 of course you will not run away right so the, the prophet actually makes dua to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send a uh, sorry, uh, to send a, a king right? and then he got wahi from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the king that is over you is talut right? and talut was a man amongst the people right he was not rich he was a very poor man right uh, but he was given strength he has he had uh, physical strength and he was given intellect right so it uh, so when allah appointed him as the pro- as as a king to lead them into 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 war right they began to argue with the prophet you know how can he be given kingship you know a kingdom over us you know when we are we are we are richer than him and we are more deserving of being king right and then the prophet said you asked for a king and allah appointed for you a king now, of course he is not but more than you when it comes to riches but he is more than you when it comes to and right knowledge and uh, and strength right and in the quran it says that knowledge and strength he had that more than you and not riches and the prophet said you know and a sign of his kingdom of him being king is that there will come a chest there will be a, a, a like a like a like a treasure chest that will come to you right and in it are the remnants of nabi musa and nabi harun right and means like nabi musa staff was given to them right there were a few things that was in this chest that were, that was carried down from the sky from the angels by the angels and it will be sent right in front of him to show that he is a prophet he is his, he is a king right? and true enough angels came right? and they brought this chest with the remnants of nabi musa and nabi harun inside it's all in surah baqarah you can find the entire story there right and then in front of uh, talut right so then talut marches out uh, and uh, to to fight jalut right jalut is goliath right i don't know why it's talut in in english right but jalut is goliath right so they went out to, they want to march out and in the army is young nabi dawud right the young nabi dawud is within the army Right, so they reach a river, and Paulus says to his army, "Right, Allah is going to test you by this river." We see this. It, 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 it's parallel with the river of Ohad. Right, the uh, Paulus says, "Allah is going to test you by this river. Nobody is allowed to drink from this river at all, right, except for a scoop of water. That's all you're allowed from this river. Right, this is to test their obedience. Right, Allah is telling their obedience. There is no point going for war if you don't know how to obey." Right, so because there is no victory if you don't know how to obey. Right, so uh, Allah says in the Quran, and they drank, they drank and they drank and they drank. Right, they couldn't care less; they just drank. So all those who drank were left behind. They were not allowed to to, to proceed forth. Right, with with Talut and his uh, people, and, except for a few. There were a few who did obey, and they only took one sip. Only those who were allowed to go for war. And so in 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 the, in the nations of the past, right, they don't allow any boy to go for war. You have to be obedient, obedient. <laughs> right, the moment you show any form of hypocrisy or disobedience, you are not allowed to come along. You stay at home, right? And in fact, you know, if you are distracted, stay at home. Right? There is a hadith you know, of a, of of a, of a prophet. Right? Before he would go for war, he would say to his to his people, "Any of you here who has a house that is half built and he wants to finish it, stay at home. Any of you here who just got married, stay at home." Any of you, so 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 he so, so you will go on, you know, with a few list, you know, list of of people, right? but you know what? Don't come with us because you're distracted, right? You know, your heart is in something something else, right? If you if you can't, you know, be be detached from whatever whatever you have left behind, then go stay at home, right? Don't don't follow us, right? So in the, in the, the nations of the past, they were very strict right? as to who is allowed to come for more, right? because they have to be very firm in their way. So anyway, basically, the story is that um the the men who only took one uh, scoop of water as drink. Right, and they went past the river with 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 four loots. Right, they were three hundred and thirteen, the exact number as Badr, exact number. Right, they were three hundred and thirteen men. Right, they were very very uh, small number compared to Jalut and his army. Jalut was described to be like it was kind of like huge monsters, you know, like giants. They were thought to be giants. Right, so there these people who went forth and they said, you know, how is there any way whereby we can we can uh, overcome Jalut today? Right, there is no way for us to. To be to be able to overcome jalut and those who have who have yakin in the akhirah, they say how many times right has a small band of people defeat uh, uh, defeated uh, a large band of people by the will of Allah and for surely Allah is with the patient 
right? And then of course uh, the stories in the, the Bidawud was the one who killed Jalut. Right? In uh, again in a duel, and they began with a duel. Right? Jalut came out, and he was the leader and uh, the the fiercest warrior and the most strongest and whatsoever. He came out first, and he challenged them to a duel. Right, and then they were only three hundred and thirteen, and they were very small people, and they were weak. Right, and then Jalu was prancing around, saying, "You know, do well, do well, do well." Right? And between Nabi Dawood comes out, and he's a young boy at that time. Right, and Nabi Dawood, so he goes, he threw a rock at Jalu's head, right, a very hard rock at his head, and Jalu fell over, collapsed onto the ground because of his size. He died, and on the spot he died. Right? so when he died, his people fled. That's what duels can do, eh? Duels really basically mean you don't have to fight. <laughs> if your strongest guy. I can't beat our strongest guy. I mean, or our strongest guy beats your strongest guy. Then don't fight. I go home. <laughs> so that's why they do always do duels. Right? So don't, don't waste your time. Right? Let's have your strongest, strongest can fight. You know, but you know, in Badr we saw they had the duels happen, right? and they still fought. Right? They still fought and they lost. Right? In Uthud also there was a duel right? that happened, and of course the Muslims won. I said that Zubair was the one who came out. It was uh, Talha bin Abi Talha, right? who was of the disbelievers who came out, right? and he was killed you know, flat. Right, and then it was one blow, and he fell off his horse, and then another blow, and he died. Right, so it, uh, and, but still they continued with the war. Right, so because I mean they they want to destroy the Muslims. Right, but usually, usually for armies, whenever the duel happens, and you know one side wins the other, right, you know what they just call it quits. <laughs> they say you know what this is surrender, <laughs> and because they got scared, their their leader died, Jalut died. Right, and then Nabi Dawood was given kingdom and he was given prophethood. Right, he's the, uh, he's the, uh, the first one who was given kingdom and prophethood at the same time. Then after Nabi Sulaiman, his son, took over. Right, so, so that band of people that came when, when forth was 313. Right, so the special number. The special number. So the people of Badr, they are 313. Right, the people of Badr, we mentioned that they have a station in Islam. They do. Right, and uh, every year on the 17th of Ramadan, so this Ramadan is the uh, commemoration of Badr, you know, to the anniversary. The, the, the yearly, you, you remember the Battle of Badr, right? There is a Sunnah, right? not a Sunnah, but basically a way of the of the righteous, but they will recite the names of the Ahlul Badr, 313, right? It's been written into a uh, poetry format, like, whereby you can recite it easily, right? And then when, when and they, because these are the 313 people of, of Al Badr, they are they are like the the highest of the Sahaba. Like of the side of the highest lah. Like I those who fought in Badr, you know, Ahlul Badr means Ahlul Badr, right? Nobody can you know compete with Ahlul Badr, right? So uh, it's become even a title among the Sahaba, right? So so when they recite the trinity names, they will take tawassul, right? They will they will make dua with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala by the names right, of the Ahlul Badr. This is done every year on the seventeenth of Ramadan, right? In, especially in Muslim countries, right? So uh, in Singapore, like personally, I do it, you know, in our small circles, right? On the seventeenth of Ramadan. Right. Uh, then, then you can recite other names of the Ahlul Badr. Right. So, so you see in Uhud, what has happened is that we saw, we mentioned last week, right, that a thousand people went out, of which three hundred were hypocrites. Right. So, so as they were marching out, the chief of the hypocrites, Abdullah bin Ubay, right, he began to you know basically, right, he began to throw a tantrum, right, and then he said, you know what, we didn't agree to this, we don't want to go out, so why should we go out? Right, so he threw a tantrum and he marched back with his 300 hypocrites. Right, you're like, 300? Abdullah bin Ubay. Abdullah bin Salam is a Jew who became Muslim. Right, Abdullah bin Salam. <laughs> right, Abdullah bin Salam, the head of the Jew, the Jewish rabbi. Abdullah bin Ubay. Right. Yeah, it gets confusing, like, the names. <laughs> then you're like, Abdullah who? Huh? Abdullah bin Sabah. Abdullah bin Sabah. Abdullah bin Sabah, like, like. Different guy. <laughs> it's another one, another one, that's another one. Right? What's his story? I forgot him also. Did I mention his story? His name? Yeah. Of the Khawarij. That's the one. <laughs> right? The one is like Khawarij, which later, later. Alright. Okay, so uh, so we, we spoke about the the munafik turning back, right? Okay, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, right, in Surah Ali Imran, right, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِذْهَمَّ الطَّائِفَتَانِ مِنْكُمْ أَنْ تَفْشَلَا وَاللَّهُ وَلِيُّهُمَا وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَلْيَتَوَكَّلِ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ right, this, is the, this is the verse that was revealed on, on the account of the munafiq. Right when the munafik they 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 were thinking, 
right? Allah says when 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 these groups, you know, these two groups of munafik, they were thinking of uh, abandoning right, the Muslims, and Allah says, you know, Allah knows what they are going to do. Right? Allah is aware of what they are about to do, and and on the Muslims, and on, on Allah, the Muslims place their trust or their reliance, the tawakkal. The tawakkal actually, I prefer to translate it as reliance. Right, it's not so much trust, trust, it's trust, right, but it has a stronger connotation of reliance. Right, to rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And right, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we mentioned just now before you came in, Baiza, that uh, we're going to go through the verses of the Quran right, that speaks about uh, Battle of Uhud because uh, this battle was, was, was mentioned a lot in the Quran. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, right, in Surah Ali Imran also, وَلَا يَعْلَمُ الَّذِينَ نَافَقُوا وَقِيلَ لَهُمْ تَعَالَوْا قَاتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَقِيلَ لَهُمْ تَعَالَوْا قَاتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أَوْ يَدْفَعُوا right so when it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and to know right those who are hypocrites when he is said to them come fight in the way of Allah they say قَالُوا لَوْ نَعْلَمُ قِتَالًا لَاتَّبَعْنَاكُمْ they say, oh, if we knew it was really going to be fighting, we have come. Whatever. <laughs> Allah says, Hum lil kufri yawma idin aqrabu minhum lil iman. Yaquluna bi afwahihim ma laysa fi qulubihim. Wallahu a'lamu bima yaktumun. Allah says, they on that day, they were closer to disbelief than they were to belief. Right? This, this, this uh, munafiq, this hypocrites. Right, uh, uh, they say with their mouths what is not in their hearts. Allah, for surely Allah knows what they hide. Right, these are the the, 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 the munafik. So Allah made it clear because three hundred left. Right, so it was clear, clear. Right, who are the real believers and who are the uh, munafik? Right, right. So so we mentioned the story of the munafik they left. Right, and and Allah subhanahu wa taala says to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, in other words, the, the Quran, which is not mentioned in this book. Right, that Allah says, you know what? Even if they were around you. Right, they wouldn't have helped at all because they will be going around casting doubts in the hearts of the believers. Right, they're going to be parasites amongst you. Right, so, you know, good riddance. Lah. <laughs> Let them go. <laughs> right, Allah does not want them among, you know, in the ranks of the believers because they are cracks in the ranks. That's what munafik are. Which right, so is why in Nabi Dawood's story, right, Allah gave that law. You know, only drink of a handful. How many of you can obey? If you can't obey, then get lost. You know, go home. Right? Don't be amongst the ranks because, because we, want, we want firm walls. We don't want cracks in our walls. Right? So these munafik, all they are, they're cracks. Right? So good riddance. You know, you had, rather have one you know, small firm wall than a huge wall full of cracks. Right? You'd rather have that. Right? So, so Allah is Allah. And you know what? Allah is the one that gives victory. So it doesn't matter that they want to follow, they want to follow, whatever they want to do. They can, they can really you know, uh, go, go, go home. Right? They don't have to come. Uh, with people uh, to, to the battle. Right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is secret to Rasulullah Sallam. Don't worry about them. Don't worry about them. Like whatever. They want, they, they, they want to be uh, munafik. And then, you know, in, in Surah Baqarah, Allah says, you know, they try to, 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 to deceive the believers, but they're only deceiving themselves. Right? They think that they're leaving the battle is going to weaken the disbelievers. They are leaving the battle strengthen the believers. Right? An opposite effect. You know, they think leaving 300, oh, 300 people leave, left, left, the, left the army, now from 1,000, around 700. So they think that, oh, by leaving the battle, oh, we have weakened the Muslims. They will lose now. And they, like, you say in Malay, like, they, they are, they are, they are, their enthusiasm goes down because people all just left. Like, like, you know, like, for example, if you have a gathering, right, and it's supposed to be, the whole family is supposed to come. Then suddenly on the day itself, some boys cannot make it, others cannot make it, others cannot make it, others cannot make it. Right? And you're like, like, <laughs> like, you don't want to go ahead with it, again. Even though not like half people can't make it. <laughs> like, you don't want to go ahead. You, like, you feel like you're no mood, right? Like, no mood to go ahead with, with, the, with the gathering. This is a battle. Like, you come out a thousand, supposed to be a thousand, three hundred go. Like, you, like, <laughs> like, you might, it might break your smangat. Right? It might break your enthusiasm. It might. But, as Allah says, ah. Huh? It actually firm because Allah sent down the ayat and on Allah you place your reliance not on your numbers. Your numbers mean nothing. Your numbers mean nothing. And of course in other parts of the Quran Allah says, you know, in other parts of the other battles but the Muslims came out in very strong numbers, right? But they ran, they fled. Because they were new Muslims, right? They fled. So then Allah says that says in the Quran and you came out in huge numbers. But you know what? Your numbers didn't benefit you anything. Right, so you, you don't see victory with numbers. You don't at all see victory with numbers. You see victory with obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is true victory. 
Uh, which is why, you know, the ulama of the past, you don't really see, you know, oh, how many like, followers you have, or how many... Uh, it's all diseases. It's all diseases. Or how many people came, or how many people... Well, it doesn't matter. Right? What matters is, is Allah pleased? If Allah is pleased, then there is a victory. Right? If Allah is displeased, then there's no victory. There's nothing there. Right? So, it's, it's, so you, you keep yourself focused. So the Bata Uhud, so many lessons right, for us to actually uh, learn from. Right, so it, uh, we mentioned the story of Abu Dujana also, right? That's the part. Okay, let me see if any other verses that I might want to uh, mention, right? Uh, all right, the the dual also we mentioned, right? Okay, before you move on to the next battle, I won't. As I mentioned, I won't be going into the small uh, battles in between, right? We mentioned about that with Sayyidina Hamza, right? With Wahshi, right? how Wahshi killed Sayyidina Hamza. Right, we mentioned that. Alright. Uh, okay, alhamdulillah. Right. So, so basically we mentioned about how the, the archers came down from their positions. Right? And of course Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, there's a verse about this. Right, but it's not here. Let me just get the verse. Right, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Right, never mind. And I find the verse, I'll say the verse. Alright. So anyway, so what happens? We're going to continue from the archers part. Right. So the archers, so basically after the battle began, right, there was a, there was a duel, right, between uh, uh, Talha bin Abi Talha and Sayyidina Zubir alayhi salam. Uh, Sayyidina Zubir radiallahu anhu, right? And uh, Sayyidina Zubir he f- f- finished off uh, Talha bin Abi Talha easily. Right, it was one blow, two blows, and he was done. Right, and then the battle began, and the Muslims were winning the battle very quickly. Right, there is a map here in this book, so I like this book. Right, so there's a map here. <laughs> we can see the drawing. <laughs> there. Okay, so basically, how do we make sense of this, right? Okay, this is a map of Uhud. Okay, I'm going to show you how this works. All right, uh, the mountain of Uhud is here. Okay, it's about to foot. This is the Archer's Hill. Okay, this is where the battle took place. All right. So the battle took place. Okay, at first, the battle took place here. Okay. So when it took place here, the Muslims were getting the upper hand. Right. They they read. They were they were they were pushing the disbelievers back 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 back, and they began to run away. All right. So when they began to run away, right, the archers who so the archers were placed here. You know, so the the, the mountain was behind them. You see that? The mountain was behind them. The disbelievers came from this way. The Muslims held the mountains to their back right, as a strategy. Right? Because you now your back is, is protected by the mountain. So they can't come. So, but also saw that, this, that they could actually come from this side. Right? So, uh, around the hill. Because if not for the hill, uh, if not for the hill, they would have seen it was flat ground. So it's easy to actually uh, fight. Right? Because of the hill, right, they could, they, they, their view was blocked right, by the hill. Okay? So he placed the arches on the hill. So what happened? the hill. So they began to fight. They were fighting here near the near the uh, mountain. And another strategy of, of fighting near mountains is because if you are towards the mountain, your, your back is towards the mountain, which we actually showed, uh, we actually really proved to be useful later on when the disabilities got the upper hand, right? When the mountain is, 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 is behind your back, right? When you are losing, you run up the mountain. So when you run up the mountain, you fight from the top and your enemy from the bottom, right? You have the upper hand. Literally the upper hand. <laughs> you, are, you are from the top and they are from the bottom. Right? So it's just a strategy in, strategy in war. If you come first and there's a mountain there, choke. Right? Choke the mountain. Right? In Badr, they choke all the water. <laughs> right? in, in Uhud, they choke the mountain. Right? So, yeah. When, when, you, when you fight, it's you easier. No, 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 no. It's easier that you are you're above. It's easier. It's easier when you are above. When you fight. Right? Maybe you don't fight on mountains. <laughs> Or maybe oh, one day, you only no. Okay, the, the, this is what desert people for them mountain is like you know like like land. <laughs> they have no issues climbing mountains, right? So when you're on when you're on a higher ground, you actually you actually have a you, you actually have a, a yeah a better view and also there is um like a leverage like in a way you have you have okay it's okay <laughs> let's not try to let's not try to understand this. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, so basically, they hit your legs in a way. They can't get to your chest and your neck, right? Because you're you're on higher ground, 
right? But and they are on lower ground. You can hit the head and top the head, the necks off easily, right? So so is 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 you do have of course if you are on lower ground also, you see eh, on your on higher ground if you come forward you can still catch your balance. If you're on lower ground, if you're hit backwards, you fall. You see, you cannot really catch your balance as you, as you run, if you're hit, you're hit backwards. Right? But if you're, if you're, if you're, pull for, you're pushed forward, you can still catch your balance easily. Right? So, so always being on, a top, on a higher ground is always an, a better idea. <laughs> and then being on, uh, uh, on lower ground, you're disadvantaged right, in the other way. So actually the Muslims had a good strategy whereby they place themselves with the mountain towards their back. Right, and there's some mention about, about battle, the mountain of Uhud, that it, was, it is a mountain that loves us and we love it. Right, so this mountain of Uhud, it is a blessed mountain. Right, so, so we go and visit Uhud as a believer. Right, Uhud is a believer. It, it witnessed the battle of Uhud. Right, so it is a hadith, it's a hadith. Right, and some, once he stood on Uhud, and some, he, would, he would visit uh, Uhud regularly right, because of the martyrs there. Right, he would actually visit the martyrs at Uhud about once a week. He would go out and visit the martyrs at Uhud. Right, so so in a sense, so, so there, are, there are narrations about his on Uhud, right, and the mountain begins to shake, right, and he will say, you know, make me firm or Uhud, and for surely on you is a prophet and a Siddiq and two martyrs, right, meaning Rasulullah Sayyidina Abu Bakr, Sayyidina Umar, Sayyidina, uh, Sayyidina Osman, uh, two martyrs, Sayyidina Umar, Sayyidina Osman, the Siddiq, Sayyidina Abu Bakr, the prophet, of course, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right, so then it's because then Uhud will stop shaking. Because right, you know it got excited, you know, this, <laughs> we were on it, right? So, so the, the battle began here, right? And they got the upper hand. They they they, they chased the disbelievers away. When chased the disbelievers away, the archers, right, saw what was going on. You can see in the in the map, right? So they ran down, right, to catch to get the booty because the booty was left behind. Right? And we mentioned that the, the you know, to have a, a good opinion of the Sahaba, they did not run down, right, to to get the booty for them for their own dunya, no. But they saw the booty as because the booty that's left behind is a shield, swords, you know, armor, you know, like all kinds of you know materially, uh, uh, all kinds of military stuff, right? So that they and they are poor. You mentioned in Badr they only had eight swords, right? They don't mention in Uhud how many they have. So for them, you know, this is this is good stuff for jihad. <laughs> you want to fight more jihad, you know, and they foresee there's going to be more wars. Right, you might as well go and you know take, take all the stuff. Right, so they ran down right, against the instruction of their Amir. They had an Amir over them, they had a commander over them who said, Do not leave your positions, your posts. Or so some said, Do not leave our posts until he gives us the instructions, even if we see birds pecking on their uh, bones. Right? We don't, don't leave our posts. But they said, No, 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 the battle is over, the battle is over, the disbelievers are gone. And they could see the disbelievers running away. So they, don't, they, they didn't see that Sayyidina Khalid ibn Wadi was watching them. Right. So they saw the people standing over. So they said, we're done. It's done. So if we run down, no one's going to go from the back. Right? Because we're, we're done from the, from the battle. It's, all, it's, all, it's finished. The disbelievers are running away. So you can see, you know, of our hostels on the Sahaba, that was how they, 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 they judged. You know, so it was not at all, you know, like they were saying Muhammad. It was not at all that they, they, they went ahead of, of what it was. They really saw these believers running away. Right? And they really thought that, you know what, they're not going to turn back. Right? They, 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 they're gone, they're gone. Right? So they came down. So of course when they came down, Sayyidina Khalid bin Walid took this path, right? this circle path. Sayyidina Khalid bin Walid saw what has happened. So he took a, like a long route right? around. Right? And then he, uh, so the, the, the believers were already here. So he now, they, he came from the back. So when he came from the back, he began to attack the believers from the back. Right? Now they can't run back up the, up the mountain. Because the, the, the believers has come between them and the mountain. You see that? Right, uh, so <laughs> that's what's going on in the oh, right. so, so when they began fighting from the back, now these believers who ran forth, they turn around and they see, oh wait, the, 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 the believers are no longer at our heels. Right, they're being attacked from the back. And this Khal Sayyidina Khalid bin Walid is there. Right, and he's attacking them on horses. Right, the cavalry is all behind. Right, so now the disbelievers turn back and they fight the believers. So, so now the believers are sandwiched. Right, see how severe, eh? severe uh, Uhud was, severe. This is why many, 70 Sahaba were martyred on, in Uhud, 70 Sahaba martyred, right? Masayna uh, Muhammad, Rasulullah uh, Sallallahu himself was harmed, right? he was hurt, his, his, his helmet, he had a helmet on, the, the clasp, right, uh, pierced into his cheek, right? <laughs> battles, <laughs> battles, battles, <laughs> right? The, the, the helmet, the, the clasp, the clasp, it's like they have a clasp that holds the helmet up. So the metal uh, into his cheek, right? And then his uh, his his uh, front teeth, right? Uh, got 
broken. Yeah, so <laughs> battle, it's a battle, right? So you need to, huh? No, no, no. No, it's just broken, broken teeth, right? But you know, alhamdulillah, right? Uh, uh, there was uh, Sayyidina Abu Ubaidah. So basically, we're gonna go into the okay, now what's going on, eh? So now they're sandwiched, right? Hmm, now they're sandwiched, what's going to happen? The, the now, now there's chaos, there's chaos. Uh, the believers are now all over the place. These believers are having getting the upper hand, right? And uh, we mentioned last week that Sayyidina Musa bin Omer, he was killed, right? And the news spread throughout because the disbeliever who killed him thought that he was Rasulullah Wasallam because of his eyes. He had the same eyes as Rasulullah Wasallam, and he had his face covered with a cloth, right? So, uh, so, so he thought that he killed Rasulullah Wasallam. So he began to proclaim, you know, Muhammad is dead. Muhammad is dead. You know, I killed Muhammad. Right, uh, and then the belie- uh, the disbeliever. So, so the believers began to believe that, and they couldn't fight because in such a chaos, they couldn't fight Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Right, so so they all began to believe that, and that really weakened their spirits. That really weakened their spirits. There were those who thought, you know what, let's just give up, let's just give up, and just go home and right? leave the, the battle. Right, and of course in Islam it's actually a major sin to actually leave the battle. They're not allowed to run away from battle. It's a major, major, major sin to flee battlefield. It is a major sin. Right, uh, uh, and then some of them say, you know what? For what go home? If he's dead, I want to die too. You know, like you know, there's no point living in this world if our Prophet Sallallahu is dead. I want to be dead too. I'm <laughs> meeting him, meet him where he is. <laughs> right? So you know, so they say, no, why? For what go home? Continue fighting. You know, let's just fight until we die together with him. You know, we don't want to, we don't want to, to go back to Medina and he's not there. Mm-hmm. Right? So, 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 and then uh, as they were fighting, then uh, someone spotted us because of some fighting. Because there was so much chaos right, going on. You must imagine, you know, 3,000 disbelievers, 1,000 believers. There's a lot of people. Right? It's about, you know, 700 believers, sorry. It's like 3,700 people are fighting in a, in a battle. You, know, you, you, you can't lose people. You don't know who's where. And the more you're being sandwiched, it's, it's chaotic. Right? You don't know which way is front, which way is back. You don't know which way you're fighting. And Sayyidina Hamza, you know, he was fighting from all around him. And people were attacking from all sides. So, and he was, they say, Sayyidina Hamza, he's not died yet. Sayyidina Hamza died after the, the collision, you know, after the, 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 the archers came down. So, the fighting all around, right? And then eventually, uh, Wahshi, who's just been aiming Sayyidina Hamza from the beginning of the battle, right, he found a window of opportunity and he threw his uh, spear. That was it for Sayyidina Hamza. And for Sayyidina Hamza was his scribe, you know, that day he could fight all around him. No, he could, three men coming at him, he could fight all them off. Right, the Sayyidina Hamza. But, you know, of course, you know, it's unfair play because Wahishi was just watching him and he was standing on the outside of the battle. That was it. He was waiting for a, for a clear shot before he, he, he threw his spear. That was it. Right, and then this hit Hamza straight in the heart. Right, and then he, uh, he, he died, Sayyidina Hamza, radiallahu anhu. Right, so the battle became intense right, at that point, and Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he began to shout out, saying to the believers, because they were running away. Right, they were basically it was so much chaos; they were running all over the place, and he was saying, "Halumu ilayya ana Rasulullah." Right, he was trying to say to them, "Come to me, come to me. I'm the Prophet of Allah. I'm the Prophet of Allah." Right, because you can imagine the kind of the kind of chaos is going on right now. Right, so come to me. So seven of the Sahaba came to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Right, uh, Sayyidina Muhammad. Right, so uh, they, they began to protect. They began to to, to form a, a circle around Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Right, and then uh, they began to move towards the the the, the mountain of Uhud. Right, so you see how now you see that they're seeing is a is a, a serious situation right now. Right, so they need to run up the mountain. Right, so they so they they managed to they actually managed to to fight off the disbelievers. Right, being around Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, right, and they managed to they managed to push themselves right towards the mountain, right, and then they managed to, uh, they managed to uh, there were nine of them, sorry, nine of them, not seven, nine nine Sahaba, right, they managed to um, get up onto the mountain, right. So now, okay, things have come down, right. The believers have fled up the mountain. Seven hundred seventy died, so six hundred and thirty survived. About there, yes. These believers, I didn't mention basically how many died. Right, so they went up, right, uh, the mountain, and then uh, right, so they went up the mountain, right, and then the the, the, the kind of like the scene uh, quieted down, right, and these believers dispersed, right, at that point. 
Right. Uh, and then, so Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, right? He is. Right. So he is uh, Masayna Muhammad. He is on the mountain right now with the, with, the, with, the, with the believers who have also fled up the mountain. The disciples didn't pursue them up the mountain. Right? Because as mentioned before, it is not a good idea to pursue people up the mountain. Right? Because you know, you're on the uh, lower ground. Right? So it's not actually a good idea to actually pursue. So when the Muslims go up the mountain, then uh, they, they kind of like, they, they, they dispersed. Right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and, and so Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, on the mountain, the believers began to uh, see right, that he was uh, injured in his cheek. Right, and Sayyidina Abu Ubaidah, right, he they tried to remove the 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 helmet, right, but it was so hard stuck inside they couldn't pull it out, right. So and Sayyidina Abu Ubaidah he clamped his teeth onto the metal piece and he yanked it, right. So when he yanked it, right, his teeth actually came out because of how hard it was. This is what they used to do, right. But but uh, the the Sahaba said, you know, with his teeth off. Right, he actually increased in his beauty. Right, he looked more handsome right, because of what he did for Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And Allah actually made the situation for him uh, increase his beauty. <laughs> right, Subhanallah. You know, it just uh, Abu Ubaidah radiallahu bin Jarrah. Abu Ubaidah bin Jarrah. He's one of the ten who are promised paradise. Right, uh, on the tongue of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. All right. So now. Uh, and then and then they began to and another sahaba he, he after after uh, Abu Ubaidah pulled out the metal piece from his cheek, uh, he, the other sahaba placed his mouth on the cheek of Rasulullah SAW and sucked the blood, right, and to 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 not allow the bleeding, right, and they did actually to to stop the bleeding, right, and then uh, uh, he couldn't know how to throw out the blood right, of Rasulullah SAW onto the ground, so he swallowed it, right. So one of the sahaba can't make his name. Right, but uh, yeah, he he see he one of the sahaba did that, right? And then uh, Rasulullah said to him that uh, since you have done that, then your 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 blood, right, is your blood your blood is uh, haram on the hellfire, right? Is haram on the hellfire. All right, so here, and Rasulullah said, you know, how can the people ever ever uh, achieve success when they have hurt the face of their prophet? Right. It's impossible. This will not. The Rasulullah saying that that means impossible. That these people will ever achieve success because they have they have caused you know uh, 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 they have caused a wound right, to the face of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Right. Who was it that caused that on him? Huh? Who were the disbelievers? Allahu alam. It was not mentioned. Yeah, but we see during the battle, right? So his his helmet uh, pierced into his uh, cheek. Right. And then Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, and in the hadith, Rasulullah said that Allah's anger right, is severe on the people right, who made the face of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam bleed. Right, and Allah subhanahu wa taala, and Rasulullah said to uh, Allah subhanahu wa taala, made dua to Allah subhanahu wa taala, Oh Allah, forgive my people, for surely they do not know. Right, he doesn't want Allah subhanahu wa taala to take uh, to destroy them yet, right, because he's, he has hope for them being. Uh, uh, Muslim and and mashallah of the people who who fought in battle against the Muslims, there was a huge number that actually became Muslim later on. Mm-hmm. Right, Sayyidina Khalid bin Walid, one of them. Right, Sayyidina Khalid bin Walid. This is the first battle that was against the Muslims. Eh? Mm. Right, see, they say Sayyidina Khalid bin Walid never lost a battle. Right, and even the battle that he fought against the Muslims, he still won that. <laughs> so he never lost a battle in his lifetime. He never lost a battle. Right, so even as a disbeliever, he won the battle against the Muslims. And but that was the only battle that he fought against the Muslims. Thereafter, he was on the other side. Right, he actually quickly went on to the other side of the. He was he was a smart man. Sayyidina Khalid Mawali was a very smart man. So when 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 Ibrahim and Sayyidina Khalid Mawali came, right, uh, to Medina to proclaim his Islam, Rasulullah said to him, actually said to him. I was wondering when you come. <laughs> you know, I was really wondering, you know, when will it hit you? <laughs> You're a smart man. You should have figured this out by now. <laughs> so, you know, it's in the record that he actually said that to Sayyidina Khalid bin Walid. You know, I was wondering, you know, what took you so long <laughs> to figure this out? <laughs> because he was a very smart man, right? So, you know, some people, they're very smart. So, you know, it's, for them, it's a matter of time before they begin to believe because they can see the truth, the, 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 the evidence is right in front of them. Right, so for them to, to deny the evidence that Abu Jahal, right, it is more of uh, arrogance and, and of course uh, hasad, envy against Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, right? And Allah subhanahu wa taala, uh, Muhammad. All right. So okay. So now 
when they're up on the mountain, right? And of course, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned, right, about one of the Sahaba, right, uh, Talha, right, man ahabba an yanzur ila shahid yamshi ala wajhi al ardi, fal yanzur ila Talha bin Ubaidillah, right? So, and Talha, one of the great great companions, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, is of the ten who are also uh, given the good news of paradise. Right, he fought. Oh, he fought valiantly in this battle. Right, he was really, it was really his day. Right, the way he fought. And Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, right, uh, 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 Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, right, that whosoever wants wants to look at a shaheed who is walking on the face of this earth, then let him look at Talha. Right, because Talha was, you know, subhanallah, the kind of the amount of uh, uh, scars that he got right from. From this battle, right, and the kind of uh, difficulty that he went through uh, in this battle, right, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, you know, said that he he is a walking martyr on earth, right, that he was uh, that he was uh, kept alive. All right, so so now, right, what has happened, right, what has happened is that they are on the mountain and Abu Sufyan comes. All right, there are many stories in between, right, but you know, it's 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 just, it's it's a lot of detail, but alhamdulillah. Right, so uh, so Abu Sufyan comes. Right, he comes near the mountain, and Abu Sufyan begins to call out. Yeah, so not Muslim. Abu Sufyan becomes Muslim at the conquest of Mecca. Yeah. Okay, remember conquest of Mecca. So Abu Sufyan, so Abu Sufyan also another one who was a bit late, late comer right, into the religion because he, you know, he's he's been there since the beginning. Right, he's been fighting the Muslims, so he's a bit of a late comer, right? And and for him, Abu Sufyan, you will see the rest of his life after he becomes Muslim, he de- he dedicates his life to jihad, right? Because he felt so uh, guilty for all those years fighting the believers, you know, and fighting Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that he felt that he needs to you know make up for it, right? So it, so after becoming believer, he he just he just dedicated his entire life, right, to uh, fighting in the way of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Wahshi also. Right after killing Sayyidina Hamza, he also eventually becomes Muslim. Wahshi, right? He eventually becomes Muslim, and then he sets. He also did that. He his life to jihad, right? because they, they all feel they all feel it lah. You know, they 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 they, they killed Sayyidina Hamza, and they killed the, the big Sahaba, and they, you know, Subhanallah. There is there is one hadith where Rasulullah said that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala laughs, right? And laughing here meaning that Allah is pleased with Allah is ridha, right? on two people. Right, one kills the other and they're both in paradise. And the Sahaba asked, how is that so, Ya Rasulullah? And how can the one kill the other and they're both in paradise? And Rasulullah said that, well, the one, the one who, there the, the are two people who are in a, in a battle and one of them was this disbeliever. The disbeliever kills a believer and the believer goes to paradise. You know, after a while, the disbeliever enters into Islam and fights in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he enters into paradise. <laughs> and he is killed and he enters into paradise. Right? So, you know, and Allah is pleased in that situation because they used to kill, you know, the believers and then they became believers themselves. Right? And then now they are killed in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they're all in paradise. <laughs> right? So, and this happened to many, many of the sahaba, many of them, right, who killed uh, the believers, right, in the battle of Uhud. And thereafter, they were killed in the, in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wahshi, he killed Musaylima Dlaya. He was the one right, who went out to the battle of Yamama in during the time of Nabi Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. Uh, he killed Musaylima the liar, the one who claimed to be a prophet. Wahshi was the one who killed him. Right, and Wahshi, after killing Musaylima the liar, he said that I killed the best of men, which is Hamza. Right, and now I kill, I kill, I'm killing the worst of men. Uh, who is Muslim? Right to 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 atone lah. They even though Islam wipes out all that has been you know, from before, right? But they just they just you know they just feel it, you know, because you have this memory of you killing Hamza. You have this, it's, it's in your mind. Even though it wipes out your sins, are all wiped out. The memory of all that is still in your mind. You know, it's like somebody who enters into Islam and they had a life of, for example, fornication or they had a life of drinking or, or all kinds of, you know, lewdness or whatsoever. So even though they have come into Islam and they are also, they are now clean and they are all, you know, uh, fresh, but still the memory haunts them. Right? It haunts them that they, they had that life from before. Even though Allah has, you know, there is no sin on them whatsoever. They live a life of, of hitlessness before. Right? But, uh, you know, this, this Sahaba, you know, may Allah have mercy on them. They, thereafter, they live their lives just in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they couldn't, they, they, to them, they need to just atone for all that they have done. Right? They just need to atone for all that they have done. All right, so Abu Sufyan comes towards the mountain and then he, he, uh, he calls out, he says, Is Muhammad amongst you? 
Because he's also not so sure. They didn't see uh, the, the believers that fell up the mountain. So the basically, these believers, all they saw was that the believers fell up, fell up the mountain. They didn't really see Rasulullah Wasallam. So they're still wondering, right? Or even if they saw Rasulullah fell up the mountain, they didn't know if he's still alive. Right, so 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 Sayyidina Abu Sufyan he comes to the mountain, he says, and he, call, he calls out, "Is Muhammad amongst you?" And there was no answer. Right? So we not allow him to answer. And then Abu Sufyan uh, he calls out again, right? Is uh, Ibn Abi Quhafa uh, amongst you? They say, Abu Bakr, eh? right? Is Abu Bakr amongst you? And there is no answer. And then he says, "And is Omar around uh, amongst you?" And there was no answer, right? Because Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has 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 prevented them. From answering, right? Do not do not uh, answer the disbelievers, right? So they were not allowed to answer, right? So then, uh, uh, and 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 uh, Sayyidina Abu Sufyan he only asked for these three, right? So Rasulullah Sallam, Abu Abu Bakr, and Omar, which means Abu Sufyan himself at that point at Uhud understood these are the three main people in the religion, right? In Islam. If these three are gone, then halas, we have we have had the, we have had uh, victory. Right, but for as long as they are alive, no matter how many Sahaba they have killed, there is no victory. For them, it's still a defeat right, because you didn't get the main people. Right? These are the main people that by Islam will spread. Right? They're, trying, they're trying to extinguish Islam. So when you kill like, the, the, the other Sahaba who are not the main spreaders of Islam right, or the, main, the, the, the strong men in Islam, then you have not achieved anything. Right? For them, for these believers, it's no achievement right, in, in, in killing all the other you know, random Sahaba. Right, they are waiting for they were, they were aiming for Rasul Islam, Sayyidina Abu Bakr and Sayyidina Umar. Right. So subhanallah. So 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 he only asked for these three, right? And uh, uh, he knows that Islam is stood by these three. Right. And then he says, uh uh Masayna Muhammad. Right. So Walam yes al illa anha ula is salata la ali al mihi wa al mi kawmi and qiyam al Islam bihim. Right. So Islam is uh, established by these three. And then he says, right, as for these three, right, uh, that, that, then we have finished them off. Right? You finish you all off from, from these three. Right? And, and when he said that, right, saying that oh, we, have finished, we have finished Islam off by, by destroying these three, because uh, Sayyidina Abu Sufyan assumed that the lack of answer uh, meant that these three are dead. Right? So, so Sayyidina Abu Sufyan said, okay, you know what? You, these three are not alive, then we are done. We are done if you guys go home. You know, like we don't want to fight anymore. You know, we don't want to kill our lives anymore. Like, you know, they're not interested in, in further fighting. Right? If, if, so Abu Sufyan came at the, at the mountain to check. Right? Are we done? You know, if these three are, are, are gone, then we're done. Right? We, don't want to, we don't want to kill anybody else. Yeah, he saw them fleeing. Like, he see all, of these, uh, all the believers flee. But they can't tell because they're all in armor. Yeah. They're in armor, their faces are covered. So you can't really tell. And there's like 700 of them or 300 plus of them. Right? So you can't really tell who went up the mountain. And, and the way they, they ran, you know, it's, it's, it's difficult lah, to tell, right, who went up the mountain. So he called out, right, is Muhammad around? Is Abu Bakr around? Is Umar around? And there was no answer. Because he wants us to know, should we pursue? Should we pursue the battle? You know, should we pursue the, 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 the believers? Should we, should we, or should we wait around, hang around here? And then see if the, if the, if the believers come down, you know, for us to actually, uh, Muhammad, for us to actually finish them off, you know, get the main people. So when, they found, when he realized that, you know what? The, the three main people are not there, right? they've all died, then let the, let the Muslims be. <laughs> they are, they're not going to spread. <laughs> right. so, so you see, even Abu Sufyan, he knew that. He knew, These three are not around, Islam is then. Right? There is no more, there's no more Islam. This is three. Right? Aim for this three. Huh? Allah Alam, it's not mentioned here. Yeah, it's not mentioned. But it's, it seemed like it was in the same day, right? one day. Like one day, whenever it happened, right? So Sayyidina Omar, when when uh, Sayyidina, when Abu Sufyan said, "If these three not around, then we have finished them off from you." Then halas, we're done. Right? And Sayyidina Omar, he couldn't he couldn't uh, hold himself, and he says, "Oh, enemy of Allah!" Because <laughs> <laughs> even though Rasulullah said to them, you know, Shh, like, don't don't say anything." I said, "Omar, like, no, I can't, I can't." You know what? I have to respond to this guy. <laughs> He's too much. <laughs> So Sayyidina so, Omar, he, you know, he raises his voice and he says, You know, Ya Adu Allah, like, oh enemy of Allah, for surely the ones whom you just mentioned their names, they are alive. And they are here listening to you. Okay? <laughs> so they are here, they are alive, they are listening. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has caused to last like, what will harm you. 
right? you know what 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 you find harm in you know Allah has caused it to last right? and then he says uh right so 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 then so then then uh Abu Sufyan says uh Anil Hubal right Hubal is the the idol of war the name of the idol of war right so so Abu Sufyan says you know Hubal is raised glorified right and then <laughs> and then Rasulullah says to the sahaba answer him right? answer him how are we going to answer him Right, so then they say, uh, so the Sahaba say, what should we say? Right, and then uh, Rasulullah said, say, Allahu a'la wa ajal. Like Allah is even above Uhbal and he is more, he is more glorious. Right, and then uh, and then and so they say that. Right, back to 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 uh, Sufyan Abu Sufyan, and then Abu Sufyan, you know, he answered back saying that lana iz lana al uzza wa la Wala izza lakum. And he says that we have Uzza. Uzza is the other idol. The idols. And Uzza is from the word, you know, uh, glory. Right? Uzza, strength and glory. And there's no glory and strength for you all. We have glory and strength, and you don't have glory and strength. Abu Sufyan. And then Rasulullah said to Sahaba, answer him. And they say, what should we say? And they say that Allah is our protector, and there's no protector for you. Because Allah is on our side, Allah is our protector. Right, and then uh, uh, Sayyidina Abu Sufyan says, "An amta fa'al yawma bi yawm al badri wal harb sijal." Right, so which means that you know, okay, we are, we we are, we, are, we have still scores right, a day for a day, right? This day for a day of badr, right? And now we are we 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 have uh, we have settled our scores, right? Half you know, you won one, we won one, right? We settled our scores, and then uh, uh, Sayyidina Omar. He he responded to Abu Sufyan saying, "No, we are in no way the same. Right? For surely your our dead are in the are in paradise, and your dead are in the fire." Right? So, <laughs> so, you know, right? so we are in no way the same. You can't say a day for a day, right? right? Your your dead are all in the fire, rotting away. Right? Our dead are in paradise. You know? So it's, it's no no comparison. And then uh, Sayyidina Abu Sufyan says, Omar, come here. And then stop him all the while. Because Omar has been answering him all the while. Right? And then uh, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Omar, go and see what does he want. Right? So when he went to uh, Abu Sufyan, Abu Sufyan asked him. Right? He says, I take you, I take you by Allah's name. Tell me, is Muhammad alive? And she do kabil, and she do Allah. It means swear by Allah's name. Tell me, is Muhammad alive? Right? He just wanted to know. Want to know? Is he alive? And then Omar said, uh, and, then, and then he said, uh, have, did we kill Muhammad? And then Sayyidina so Omar said, <laughs> by Allah, no. We didn't kill him. He's well, he's well alive. Right? And for surely he's listening to you right now. He can hear you right now. He's well and alive. Right, and then he says, and then, uh, and then uh, Abu Sufyan says, "You are more truthful or more believed by me than my own people, because they are all saying that Muhammad's dead, and I believe you more. <laughs> so I, I know he's alive, right? Because you say he's alive, he's alive. Because you know, Omar, he will not, he will not lie, right? So, uh, so, so, okay, right? So, so, so Abu Sufyan at that point, right? He actually, uh, he actually went away." And he went away, and a very strange thing happened. He went back to this Bidibang camp. Now, see, he came all the way out to find out if these three people are still alive. So to see whether or not they should, they should, they should continue the battle, because, you know, the Muslims are now severely injured. So he came out for that reason. And he found out that, okay, Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Abu Bakr, Sayyidina Omar, they're all alive. He went back. Went back to this believing camp, packed up their stuff, and began to head back to Mecca. It's a very strange thing. And it's as if their minds were put on hold. As if Allah took away their minds for a while. So they began to pack up. So now the believers are still that wondering. He like like it's as if he went into like a state. Like a state. Like a trance. Then they just packed up. And they began to move towards Mecca. Instead of fighting back. Instead of fighting back. Because now, now the, the, the believers are weakened. 
This is the best time. When you want to wish to finish off the believers, this is the best time. Right? They are weakened, they are cornered. Right? You can regroup, you can do all kinds of stuff. You are even you up upper hand. Right? But some or other, they just began walking back to Mecca. So so okay, so they went they went walking back to Mecca. Right? And also some here he says to them, and some sees what's going on. He sees that the, 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 the disbelievers have packed up and they are moving. So the believers are not sure. Are they going back to Mecca or are they going somewhere else to ambush? Because the believers are all now on the mountain, you see, and they're scattered on the mountain. So it could be a strategy that these believers pretend to leave this, the, the scene, but they go somewhere in the ambush. So when the believers are weak, weakened and they're having their wounds and whatsoever, that the disbelievers will, 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 will surprise them from somewhere else and then finish them off. So Rasulullah Sallam says to the Sahaba, right? So he says to uh, Sayyidina Ali, who he says, go, right, and follow the disbelievers. Go and follow those people. And see what are they doing. <laughs> they spy for us a bit. Right? See what's going on. Right? What do they want? Because now it's, it's, it's a confusing situation. Right? Because it's not the time for you to pack up and go. Right? So it's <laughs> time for you to finish off your enemy. You know, you don't really go home. You're not done. Because Muhammad's alive, Abu Bakr's alive, Sayyidina Omar's alive, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Anhum. Right? So, so, so Sayyidina Ali go and see what are they doing. What, what do they want? And he says, as Rasulullah says to Sayyidina Ali, if Right, that they have, uh, that if they have, uh, if they, they are off of their horses and they are on their camels, then they are headed towards Mecca. Right, if they are still on their ca- horses uh, and they are giving drink to their camels, that means they are intending to, to go towards Medina, right, to ambush the Muslims from there. Okay. <coughs> Why? Because if you're, if you're going back to Mecca, right, you won't be tiring out your horses anymore. you just be on your camels, right? But if you intend to hang around and desert a bit more, right, then you would be giving your camels more drink because you need to actually go towards uh, Medina and they'll be on your horses right, to get there quickly right? because they, they, they want to ambush right, the, the, the believers. Right? So it, uh, and then they want Medina. And then he says, and by, and by, by the one in whose, in, whose, in whose hand is my soul, that if they want, uh, right, if they want, if they they are intending to go towards Medina, right, they will in fact, uh, right, they will in fact try to capture Medina. Right, if they're going towards Medina, they try to capture, because the believers are all out now. They're all at Uhud, right? So Medina, and there's no one there <laughs> to protect Medina. <laughs> Yeah, we children, right? So basically, the days when to say what's going on with them. So Sayyidina Ali went out right to see what they're doing, and then he realized that they were off of their horses and they were on their uh, camels, and then so he knew that they were going towards uh, Mecca. So he came back, right, uh, to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, right, uh, and right, so. Right, so, this, so he came back to Rasulullah and he said, okay, let's, so Rasulullah heard the news and he says, okay, let's uh, just get ready and go back to Medina. Right, so we are done with this battle, right, but he says that we're going to just be prepared in case the disbelievers come back. Right, so he says, hold on to your, to your swords, right, we're going to be more prepared in case they come back. Right, so Masayana Muhammad, right, so uh, there's actually one of the, uh, one of the, Sa'ad bin Rabi'ah, right, one of the believers, right, who was actually, his story is mentioned here, right, that he was actually uh, severely injured, right, of the people who were severely, severely injured, right, in the battle of Uhud, right, was this man called uh, Sa'ad bin Rabi'ah, right, and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to the, to the Sahaba that if you find him, right, send him my salams, right, and say to him, Right, how you know how are you lah? How 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 what is your situation? Right, so they went, right, and then they went to uh to to, to search between the, the people who have passed away in in in, in Uhud because now the disbelievers have left, so you have this like, battlefield of dead people, and of course amongst them are those who are uh, injured, they're not dead. So after every battle, like the losing army would actually go and uh go and search, 
uh, to see if they have anyone who is amongst the dead, right? Who are who is actually injured and not dead. Right? So when they went to search right, between them, right, and then they found him, right, and he is at his you know uh, last breath, right, and then uh, and he they say he had seventy wounds on him, right, Saad bin Rabia, right, seventy wounds on him. Right and then uh and and his wounds were basically uh stabs right or uh stabs by swords right or uh, uh by arrows right or spears right so everywhere on his body right he was everywhere there was there was uh wounds on him and then so he says to he says to this person this was actually related by Sayyidina Zaid bin Sabit so he says O Sa'id Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam sending salams to you and he asks you how are you how's the situation what's your what's what's your uh, news Right, and then he says, and unto Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam salam. So he responds in salam, and he says, say to him, Ya Rasulullah, I can smell the scents of paradise, right? And say to my people the Ansar, because he's of the of the heads of the Ansar. Eh? Uh, Sa'ad bin Rabi is of the this is the Ansar. Say to my people the Ansar, right? Never, like there is never an excuse for you if Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, right? If Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is harmed. Right or if he is killed, there is no you have no excuse, right? And for you, uh, uh, and for you to fight in the way of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, right? And then he uh, breathes his last. Right, there was the one of the leaders of the Ansar. Right, so he ended his life, right, and he came back. So some he knew, you know, of that he was in the life. The Wahi from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, he knew that this uh, Sa'ad bin Arabiya, he was actually still alive. So he sent Sahaba to go and search for him. Right, so then when they search for so eventually now they're going to bury the uh, Sahaba, right? So uh, of course when they came back to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, right, uh, he was told what he said, and he said he's of the people of paradise, right? Uh, and then there was also another Sahaba, right? Uh, who let's see his name, right? Uh, Mm. So this Sahaba, right? This one is a name. Right, so what do you do for Jurha Al Usayrim? So I keep forgetting his name. His name is an interesting name. Usayrim Al Usayrim, right? Usayrim, right? His name is Amr bin Sabit, right? And he is also found amongst the injured. He was found amongst the injured, right? And he was actually a disbeliever, right? And he was someone who actually used to say really bad things about Islam. Right, but some or other on that day itself of Uhud, right, he actually came to his his heart, right, that he wants to uh, enter into Islam, right. He wants he wants to believe. So when he came to the battle, he uh, they asked him, "What are you doing here, right? Are you are you come are you here to to make things worse, or are, are, you, are you actually desire to enter into Islam?" And he said he actually desired to enter into Islam, right. So he was of those who were severely injured, right, and uh, he fought. Uh, valiantly in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until he was uh, he was injured to that extent and he was killed. I mean he died. He died from his injuries. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said of him, he's of the people of paradise even though he has never prayed a single prayer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because he entered into Islam right before the battle. Right, so so he ran out to the battle. Right, so he had never made a single sujud to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Never prayed a single prayer, but he's of the people of paradise. One of those, you know, who are of the uh, the people of the the, the, the injured. All right. Uh, okay. So they remember they mentioned a few stories, lah. You know, of of those who were the injured. Okay. So now Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right, he is going to gather the shahids of Uhud. Right, it's now he's clearing up situation now. It's the aftermath of the battle. Right, the disbelievers will come back. Eh? It's going to hit them after a while. <laughs> so now they're marching towards Mecca. Right, they're in a trance. You know, they're in a trance. They can't think. Right, they can't. They can't figure out why they're doing what they're doing. Right? Allah took away their intellects for a while. Right, it's all, it's all in the hands of Allah. So you cannot. You cannot fight Allah. <laughs> Allah is God, right? So Allah can even, you know, you know, the right. I mean, Allah subhanahu wa taala. See, when they fight against the Prophet, it's it's a losing situation. You cannot win. He's a Prophet, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. You can't win. Like, even if you have, you know, everybody surrounding him and all of you have spears or swords, if Allah says you won't kill him, you will not kill him. You will not. Right? There is no. You you cannot force something Allah has not written. It can't happen. So you see, it's so easy for Allah. Allah has removed the intellect for a while. 
this for a moment <laughs> and they went back and they never know what they didn't know what happened you know subhanallah they're on their way back to 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 mecca and they're in a trance so halfway through on their way back allah returns their intellect to them and then he hits them like what are we doing <laughs> where are we going why we, why we, how, why should we should we finish them off <laughs> and they actually turn around they actually turn around but the muslim by then they had regrouped they regrouped, they had, you know, uh, gotten the strength again, they had, you know, washed off their wounds, they, had, they are all strong now. Right? So you see, the, 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 this belief, but then they came back, this, this next battle that will come here, but it's even the battle of Uhud, right? But they came back to try to fight, but they can't. Because the believers, they've already, you know, they've gotten back their strength. Right? So they should have come at the point when the, when the believers were already, you know, weakened. You know, that point is when you, you, you finish them off. Yeah, but they went home, <laughs> and then on their way, they, they turned around, right? And then, you know, it was going to the story later on in the one, right? Uh, and then, so Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he actually he goes to collect the shahids, right? So the shahids are collected, right? Those who died in the battle, right? And uh, Rasulullah said that I am a, I am a witness over these people, right? And that uh, there is no one who has been injured today in the way of Allah subhanahu wa taala, right? Except that Allah will raise him on a day of judgment, right, with the blood of his wounds still there, right, and the color of the blood still there, and the smell of the blood will be the smell of misk, right. So which is why the hukum of shahids right, in the battlefield they are not washed, they don't get washed janaza. They, they they will be their kafan is their clothes itself, right. So they don't have the a kafan that is uh, pulled out from somewhere else, right, and uh, they are not prayed upon. Right, because to pray upon a janazah, you need to bathe it first. And then you can pray upon a janazah, right? So they're not prayed upon. Basically, huh? no, 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 there's no praying upon them. No, you cannot. It is wrong. <laughs> you actually cannot pray upon a shahid. You cannot pray upon a shahid. The hukum, the hukum is that you cannot. Uh, you cannot. You can only pray on a janazah after it has been washed. Right? And here you see, you see the, the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because you see, if you, if you were to go to battle, and you have like 70 people die at that point. You know, or if you go to bigger battles on in, in Islam, right, a thousand, you know, uh, shahids at that point. You're going to bathe every one of them. Mm-hmm. You know, like it's, 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 it's hard. Right? So Allah has made the hukum that for shahids, they are not bathed. Right? They are buried the way they are. But they have to be buried. Right? Buried is their haq. Right? So, and how they are buried, they can be buried two or three to a grave. Right? Especially if there's a lot of them. So they can, they can put actually, actually you know, an, an, a large number to a grave. Right? So as to not tire the ones that are alive. Because the ones that are alive are just, who just finished the battle. <laughs> right? So, you know, so, so as, to, as, as a mercy, those who are still alive. Right? This, so basically, so some, whenever he would, he would uh, 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 want to bury them, right? he would actually ask the Sahaba, right, uh, who are the brothers in, in Fila. Right? So then those who are, who are brothers... Or sisters uh, fila, they are grouped together in the same in the same grave. Then the one like uh, who has memorized more Quran, right? He will be one. He will be the one who will be placed first, right? So, uh, and and that also something that and I will witness over them on the day of judgment. All right. So and of course he saw Sayyidina Hamza Rasulullah saw Sayyidina saw Sayyidina Hamza as amongst the uh, the martyr right, or shahid on the uh, on on that day, right? So Masayna Muhammad. Right, so uh, and okay, and also he saw Sayyidina uh, Musab bin Umar right, on that day, and Sayyidina Musab bin Umar he did not have enough for them to cover him with. Right, that if they pulled up his cloth over his head, to cover, because they, they usually would use the reuse the, the clothing to cover the body anyway, right, of the shahid. Right, so when they write for Sayyidina Musab, if they use his cloth to cover his head, right, his uh, feet will be shown, and if he cover his feet, his face will be shown, right, because he was so poor at that point. He was from a rich family, Sayyidina Musa bin Omer. Right? So he was so poor at that point. The Rasulullah said, you know, pull up his, his cloth, cover his uh, head, and use some leaves to cover his uh, feet right? before you actually bury him. Removed, removed. Right? The armors are all removed. Right? So it's all uh, taken. Musa bin Omer is the one that went ahead. Yes. Yes. Right? So he passed away young. Eh? Sayyidina Musa bin Omer, he passed away young. Right, uh, right, okay, so say no more. All right, so, so Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, like now he makes dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after now it's all finished, 
right and then he makes dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Right, so he says, Rasulullah he says, Allahumma lakal hamdu kull, lakal hamdu kulluhu, oh Allah for you is all praise. Allahumma la qabida lima, lima basat, la qabida lima basatta, wa la basita lima qabatta, wa la hadi lima adlalta, wa la, la, mudilla, la mudilla liman hadayta, wa la mu'ti lima mana'ta, wa la mani'a lima a'tayta, wa la muqariba lima ba'adta, ولا مبعدا لما قربت اللهم ابسط علينا من بركاتك ورحمتك وفضلك ورزق ورزقك right so all so he begins his dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying oh Allah for you is all, all of praise oh Allah none can uh, constrain what you have spread out and none can spread out what you have constrained right seeing the muslims that you know everything is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Right, and none can guide right those whom you have caused to go astray, and none can cause to go astray those whom you have guide, and none can give right uh, what you have prevented from, uh, you have prohibited, and none can prohibit if you want to give, right, and none can come close right if you have pushed them far away, and none can come can go far away if you have pulled them close. So, I mean everything in the hands of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Say, so, Oh Allah. Right, uh, spread, oh Allah, spread for us your your blessings and your mercy and your uh, bounty and your risk, right, and your and, and your uh, uh, sustenance. So, Allahumma inni as'aluka na'im al muqim. Oh Allah, I ask of you of the uh, everlasting uh, uh, bliss. Alladhi la yahulu wa la yazalu this bliss that will never uh, cease to exist in right, means of paradise. Allahumma inni as'aluka al-awna yawm al-ayla wal-ama yawm al-khawf. Oh Allah, I ask you of help on the day whereby everybody is weak and uh, safety on the day of fear and day of judgment. See, after Bata Uhud, you know, he does his dua loudly. So the Sahaba learned from him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's not when you read the dua of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because you see the way he is so, you know, he's not like, he's, he's still focused on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are already, you know, so into the battle and we're not even thinking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anymore. Right? But, you know, so he's, he's still attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything that he sees that happened in the battle, you know, is Allah's qadr. Uh, Allah has decreed this, khalas. Right, so there was no, you mentioned last week, there's no blame. We don't blame anybody. Right, khalas, you know, it's done. And the, the mistakes in Uhud never repeated itself, ever. The Sahaba learned their lesson, khalas. And it, it was not, it was not to, be, uh, to be repeated ever again. Then he says, Allahumma inni a'izun. Allahumma inni a'izun bika min sharri ma a'taytana wa sharri ma mana'atana. Oh Allah, I am seeking your refuge from all the evil that you might have given us and all the evil from what you have prevented from us. Allahumma habib ilayna al-iman. Oh Allah, make iman beloved to us. Wa zayyinhu fi qulubina. And beautify it in our hearts. Wa karrihu ilayna al-kufri. Right, and make it de- de- uh, hated, you know, uh, detestable for us. Uh, kufr, disbelief. Uh, right, and disobedience and transgression and make us of those who are upright Allahumma tawaffana muslimin oh Allah let us die as believers wa ahyina muslimin right, and uh, bring us to life as believers wa alhikna bisalihin and allow us to be gathered with the righteous غير خزايا ولا Maftunin, right, and do not and do not mean us be people who are distressed and uh, who are tested, who are trapped. Allahumma qat, Allahumma qat la kuf kufra, aladhi qat la kafra, aladhi na yakzibu na ras rasuluk. I say, oh Allah, right, the one who who, who the one who who destroys the disbelief that has denied your prophet. وَيَسُدُّونَ عَنْ سَبِيلِكَ right? and, the, and those who prevent your way, your path وَجَعَلْ عَلَيْنَا وَجَعَلْ عَلَيْنَا رَجْزَكَ وَعَذَابَكَ So وَجَعَلْ عَلَيْهِمْ رِجْزَكَ وَجَعَلْ عَلَيْهِمْ رِجْزَكَ وَعَذَابَكَ And make on to afflict them 
right? Your your curse, or your wrath, or your uh, azab, your punishment. Allahumma qatil al kufrat al ladina utu al kitab ilayhil il ilahul haq. Right. So Allah subhanahu wa taala, the Lord of Truth. Right, and uh, destroy those uh, people who disbelieve of those who have been given the book. So now they are going towards. They're going back to Medina. No, no. It's just a du'a that he read after uh, the Bible. You can read it if you want. You can take it. In the general du'a, general du'a that he read after the Bible of Orhad. Yeah, it's not. Uh, it's it's mentioned in the Sira, right? But it's not really a du'a that is read, you know, in other parts. All right, Alhamdulillah. Yeah. So now they're going back to. Um, so when they're done, you know, in in burying the the shahids, right, the the martyrs of Uhud. Right, and he has, you know, praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and guided the sahaba. Right, they are going to uh, go go back to Medina. Right, there is, uh, Masayana Muhammad, there is a uh, you know, brief story of the disbelievers coming back. But they came back after the believers actually hit, reached Medina. You know, so after the, yeah, they, were, they came, they turned back after the believers, the believers actually already reached Medina. Because you remember that Uhud is not far from Medina. Right, so so you see, Mr. <laughs> Rasam was worried, you know, when they began to pack up, he was like, they're going to Medina. Where are they going? <laughs> right, so to check, you know, if, are they, are they headed towards Medina to finish off the Medi- people of Medina? You know, we're all here. Right, but when he realized that they went back to Mecca, so they were already all the way back to going, reaching Mecca, and then they, they kind of turned back. Right, but by then, the believers were already in Medina. But right. why would the disbelievers enter Medina? It's not fair, right? Allah you know, at that point they want to destroy the, the believers. Allah They also obey the dis- at that point do the disbelievers obey the law of war. Allah Alam. There were points where they disobeyed, yeah. right? Because they were so desperate to get rid of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I mean, even them torturing the Muslims in Mecca from before the Hijra is something so I. Right, so I even in their culture, it is something unbecoming of them in their culture to this to the torture people in the sacred land, because Mecca is a sanctuary. Right, so nobody is to be harmed in Mecca. So for them to have tortured the believers in the sacred land, right, that already they went against, they transgressed right, against the laws of the Arabs. Right, that nobody uh, destroys any, uh, no one uh, hurts anybody in Mecca. All right. Okay. Inshallah, next week we will just finish off that part, uh, last part. I'll leave it for next week. Inshallah. Then I will go into the battle of Handak, right, the battle of the trench. Right, inshallah. Okay. Any questions this part? Mm. The du'a again. Can you take a picture of the metal of wood? The picture. Again. Alright. Okay, again. Who wants to buy a granny coupon? For. They can't use it. They can't use it. What? They can't use it. 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 They صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم الحمد لله رب العالمين الفاتحه ان الله يرزق العلم النافع والخير اسم قول وحسنت عن ان الله على الهدى ويسر بقب النبي صلى الله عليه واله وصحبه وسلم والى ارواح معلمنا ومشايخنا وذا من حقوق علينا والى حضر النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم الفاتحه بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك اشهد ان لا اله الا انت استغفرك واتوب اليك وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين امين